Today's video is taking this water destroyed nightstand set and turning it into this mid-century beauty. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a pair of nightstands I found off Facebook Marketplace for $75. They're a little outdated particle board with some severe water damage, but we are going to fix them right up and give these babies a second chance at life. I start all my furniture flips by cleaning the piece. Today I'm using a 50-50 mixture of water and vinegar. I just thoroughly spray the piece down, wipe it down with a clean cloth, remove the handles as I go, clean inside the drawers, clean inside the body of the nightstand, just clean all the surfaces that I can. After thoroughly cleaning, I come back with a damp cloth with some warm water and wipe away any cleaning residue and then let the surface air dry. If you are new to the channel, I have been upcycling furniture for eight coming up on nine years now. So if you like to see old outdated furniture get a second chance at life, you are definitely in the right place. So like, subscribe and hit the bell. If you can't tell these pieces are particle board by looking at them, you can always go around to the back and see that oatmeal-like consistency. These are definitely particle board. MDF pieces of furniture look more like cream of wheat. I know for these nightstands I want to update the base so I look at the current base to see how to remove it. There are no screws so it's not going to be easy removal. I'm going to have to demolition these off. Before I'm removing the current bases I decide to go ahead and sand. I'm starting with some 60 grit sandpaper and this is just on the areas that are water damaged. They are bubble up, the top is not even. So I'm using this aggressive sandpaper to smooth out the surface. And then I go over the entire surface of the nightstand with some 120 grit sandpaper just to scuff up the surface to give some tooth or grip for my primer to adhere to. After my first initial sanding, I dust the pieces off with my feather duster and then come with a damp lint-free cloth to remove the remaining dust residue. There are some cracks on the top and the particle board underneath the veneer where the bubbling was is now exposed. So I'm going to use this two-part bondo. There's the beige part and then add a little bit of the red part, mix it together. I'm going to use this with a putty knife to cover the particle board areas and then press the bondo into the cracks that I want smooth. I then let the bondo set and dry for about 30 minutes. While I wait for the bondo to dry, I start to remove the drawer slides. The bottom of the drawer is metal and the drawer slide in the body is wood, which is not a good combination. They're very splintered. One of them is splintered so bad that it's not worth saving, so it gets tossed in the trash can. It'll have to be replaced. Once the bondo was dry, I sanded that smooth with some 120 grit sandpaper. I bought some new handles for these nightstands, so I filled the old holes with wood filler and then sanded that smooth. I dusted the drawers and nightstands off and then grabbed my aqua coat. This is a water-based wood grain filler. The veneer covering the particle board is very grainy, if you will. I want to say it's oak. I'm not 100% sure. So this wood filler will help remove some of that grain look. So you just push it down into the grain and then go back over it with that applicator that comes with it and smooth the excess off. Now the curved edges was kind of hard to do with the tool, so I just used my hand to push it down in that. Just make sure you use a gloved hand if you use that method. While I wait for that to dry, I set my intention on finally removing this old base. I use a flathead screwdriver with a hammer to knock away first the bracing boards and then just use my hammer to knock away the existing base. I have to admit, I kind of enjoyed this part. <sighs> Yeah. 
after the old base is removed, you can see that there's just thin sections of particle board remaining. That's not very sturdy to screw a new base into. So I'm taking measurements here for my Home Depot trip to create a new bottom to these nightstands. The Aquacoat directions say to let it dry for 45 minutes to an hour and then sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper. So I have a 220 grit foam abrasive pad here with my surf prep sander and I'm just smoothing the surface super smooth. One coat of aqua coat gets rid of some of the grain. It would take two to three to get rid of all the wood grain. All right, so I made a trip to Home Depot and bought these two by four plywood pieces. I need an inch and a half thickness for the new bottom. These are a quarter thickness each. I'm just gonna stack two pieces together. So I measure out the pieces to fill the hole that's in the bottom of the nightstands now, and then have my husband use the circular saw to cut them down to size. To put the two pieces together, the two quarter thickness pieces together to make the one and a half inch thickness that I need, I put down some Gorilla Wood Glue, stack a piece on top, and then hamper them down to make sure that they are secure. Nailing and gluing is probably a little bit of overkill, but you know. Next, I grab my leveler to check the current edges of the bottom of the nightstand to make sure that they were level and I could follow them as a guide when putting in the new base to make sure that it was flush and even. After I got the new base in place, I double checked with my level again, clamped it into place, and then grabbed my nail gun to secure these. So I've had this nail gun for a while and I've never used it and I have no idea why I was so scared to because it was super easy and now I want to nail everything. To cover up my nail gun marks, I grabbed this stab wood filler, fill in the spots, realized I forgot to nail in the front so I did that and then wood filled those areas as well. While I waited for the wood filler to dry, I set my intention on repairing that drawer slide that I tossed in the trash can because it was too worn. I removed the old metal on the bottom of the drawer and then grabbed a drawer slide that I order off Rockler Wood Company. I will make sure to link that down below in the description for you guys. And I just set it up and get it ready to measure and cut and make this fit. So the opening at the back of the drawer isn't quite wide enough for this. So I'm measuring it off and then I grab a saw and just saw off the little pieces of wood to make room for it. And then I mark where the back of the drawer stops so I know where to make my cut with my miter saw. If you have never used a miter saw first, wear safety glasses, line up the blade, and then you're going to make your cut. Keep your hand far away from the blade. And it's a perfect fit. I drill pilot holes and then use screws to attach it to the bottom of the drawer. For the new guide inside the body of the nightstand, I just measure from one of the existing ones that's still good to use, cut that with my miter saw, and then mark where the holes need to be that I need to drill for screws. I first use a smaller drill bit to make a pilot hole and then come back with a larger drill bit to make a hole so the nail or the screw head can set down below the surface of the drawer guide so there won't be any splintering when you open and close the drawer. And then I grab some 120 grit, follow it with 220 grit sandpaper. Once all the drawer slides and guides are smooth, I grab the clear paste wax and give them a nice good coat for just for easy, it protects the wood and also helps the drawer slide in and out better. After that, I put the drawer guides back in. On the one that I replaced because it was too worn, I did end up having to remove the drawer stops because it was a really snug fit and the drawer didn't slide in and out as well because they're a little bit shorter than the existing drawer guides and slides. So 
I removed those and it gave it more, a little bit more room for it to function and slides in and out really well. And then I always test my work before I call it good. And when I'm happy with the results, it's a good. And wow, that was a lot of prep work. All right, on to the fun stuff. I'm going to spray my primer today, so I'm using some two-inch painter's tape to block off the sides of the drawer and across the opening so no overspray gets inside the drawer or on the sides. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Primer in Gray. This is a medium color of wood, medium color of primer, and I'm going with a medium-ish color of paint. This gray primer has pretty good coverage, so I just do one coat of primer and then let that dry for two hours. After the primer was dry, I noticed that you could still see the old holes from the old handle, so I would fill those, let it dry, sanded it smooth, sprayed it with primer again, and then let that dry. And finally, on to painting. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint. This is Park Bench, and I'm marking the level of where the Park Bench is because I'm going to mix a custom color. I have a little bit of Homestead Blue left over from a previous project, so I add the Homestead Blue in there. Again, mark to what level it's at, and then thoroughly mix it and check the color. I decided I wanted it a tad darker, so I grab my coal black and add two dollops of the black in that and mix it all together and I come up with this beautiful color. I don't have a name for this mixture, so if you have a name for it, put it down in the comments below and I will pin the one that I like. And in case I ever wanna make this color again, I mark and write on the side so I have the recipe. To prep the surface for paint, I am using a 220 grit sanding sponge. These are actually off of my Amazon wish list and Elaine Frank got these for me. Thank you so much for supporting my business. I truly appreciate it. After sanding, I dusted the pieces off with a lint-free cloth to remove the dust residue. I have another supporter who bought me some beautiful napkins and a Mod Podge roller, and it had no no inside, so I have no idea who to thank. I've been meaning to mention this in a video for a couple months now, so if you sent that to me, please send me a comment, let me know so I can properly thank you. So these nightstands are pretty square, so I chose to go with a foam roller to apply the paint. There are a few little nooks and crannies that the foam roller will not reach, which you will see here when I get to painting the drawers, and I just use a small artist brush to fill in those areas. To get a roller-free look, I just pick a section, so I pick either the top or the side, whatever section I wanna work on, just roll the paint on, get it on there however I can, and then I go back over that section gliding, so not using any pressure, just letting the roller gently roll across the top to remove any marks, and you can't tell what application was used to put the paint on. I let the first coat of paint dry for two hours, come back and add a second coat of paint. This Fusion Mineral has fantastic cupboards, so generally only two coats of paint is all that you need. And then I let all of that set overnight. I keep forgetting to mention that this video is also part three of who has inspired me in my furniture upcycling business. This furniture flipper is based out of Canada. She pays amazing attention to detail when it comes to prep work. She uses fusion mineral paint a lot and often mixes a lot of her own custom colors. And mid-century, I say mid-century is my jam. Mid-century is her life force, like it is what she does and she is fantastic at it. 
This furniture flipper is none other than Angie from Transcend Furniture Gallery. If you do not follow her, definitely check out her YouTube channel. I will make sure to link it down below in the description for you guys. Her work is absolutely fantastic, and I've been doing this for a long time, but I still learn things from her channel that I didn't know. All right, the next day I set my intentions on finishing up the drawers. So I just measured the center from left to right and top to bottom, make a little T so I know where the exact center of the drawer is, and then mark the holes for my new handles and drill bows. And then of course, double check my work. The insides of the drawers were okay, but this set was just really bland when it came to me, so I want to add a little something extra. So I measured the length and width of the bottom of the drawer, and I have this peel and stick wallpaper that I ordered off Amazon. You guys have seen me use it before on the channel. And I just measure it out, mark it, cut it, and I give myself a quarter an inch to half an inch, so I have a little bit of room for mess up or placement. With the peel and stick wallpaper, typically you just peel the back off. If it's a larger drawer, I'll just do peel half of it off and then try to place it down. This is kind of small, so I peel the entire backing off and then place it down. What I like about peel and stick wallpaper is usually you can place it down and if you get it in wrong, no big deal, you can pull it back up. But this already had paper lining on the bottom and I didn't know that and the paper's just ripping up as I'm ripping my paper up. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. So I just got a new piece, place it down more carefully, and then I press it down with my pampered chef scraper to make sure there's no air bubbles and it's into all the creases and edges and then grab a box knife to cut the remaining bits away that are hanging over and pull those out and then it's done. To prep the surface for a top coat, I'm using an 800 grit sanding sponge, lightly go over the surface and then wipe the dust away with a lint-free cloth. Fusion Mineral does have a built-in top coat, but if you guys have watched my channel, you know me. I say the more protection it has, the better, and especially that these came to me in a water damage condition, and I don't want that to happen again. So I'm using Odie's oil. It is, I've never used this before, but this wouldn't be a true Angie from Transcend Furniture Gallery inspired video if I didn't have Odie's of some sort in this video. To use the Odie's oil, you just mix it together and then I'm using a clean piece of t-shirt to buff, it says to buff it in and then buff it out. So I'm going in circular motions, working in sections, working the Odie's oil into the paint and then I go back in long swipes, kind of going with the grain as I finish the section. And then I let the Odie's oil sit for a couple hours and come back with a cloth and buff it out. Just wipe away the remaining excess. This stuff smells so good. I wanted to put it on everything. A few videos ago, I used Odie's wax, which is a very hard wax. And I was definitely a learning curve to work with. I found this Odie's oil very easy to work with. And you can just see that beautiful like sheen that it gives the paint. Put the new handles on the nightstands and we're almost done. Not quite yet though. If you saw my vintage military dresser video, you know that I made a base for it and it didn't end up working. So I have these pieces of wood that are already stained and protected. So I'm just using those. I cut them down to size to fit the nightstands. And I'm using my old Craig jig and it's just not working well. I'm moving all over and I said, screw that. Hello, new toy. I ordered myself a new kit and I love this. I should have bought this kit a long time ago. It comes with everything you need. A holder, a clamp to hold the wood into place. And it comes with the drill bit and then the drill bit that you need to make the holes and a measuring stick. Like it comes with everything you need. 
So to use this, you measure the thickness of the wood that you are drilling into, that said three-fourths, that has a little coupling. It's like a stop whenever you drill the pilot holes or the pocket holes for the Craig jig. And since I have three-fourths, you just put the ring to where it lines up with a three-fourth mark. Grab the little measuring tee. It has a little tightener on the end and tighten that little coupling into place. And then put that drill bit into your gun and you are set up ready to drill holes. There's three different holes in the base. The kit tells you for the thickness of wood, which ones you should go with and how you should line it up. So I just follow the directions. And I'm creating pocket holes on each end of the four pieces that make the square for the base. And then also some going up into the body of the nightstand so I can attach it thoroughly to the nightstand. Yes, this kit is more, but if you make a lot of these bases or make bases for your furniture, it is definitely worth it. I will make sure to put a link down below in the description for these. I got this off Amazon. All right, you can go in the Craig Jig kit and it will tell you to use one and a fourth inch screws for the thickness of wood that I am working with. Now you wanna make sure to get fine grade to help reduce the risk of your wood cracking when you assemble the base together. Unfortunately, I had a piece crack, so I need to make a new leg. And these had already been made and cut from a previous video, so I figured why well, have the chance, why not show you in detail how I make the front legs of my base. So I'm measuring the existing leg. They're five and a half inches in length. So I'm marking the five and a half mark. So I know how tall to make the leg. By the way, this is two by two redwood that I got from Lowe's. I can't find them at Home Depot. I have to buy them from Lowe's. Now for the angle cut, I measure an inch. You could probably do three fourths. And then I put a piece of the front wood at the top, mark it how low it is, and then draw a line to make my angle. And then I line it up. I have this in my left hand squeezed to my side as hard as I can. You can probably clamp it for safer cutting, but I just hold it very firmly. And then I cut along my five and a half inch mark to get my leg. If you guys like these modern style bases and want a detailed video of exactly how to do everything, let me know down below in the comments and I will gladly make that for you. Now I'm using some 120 grit sandpaper to sand away all the frayed edges from cutting. Go back over it with some 220 grit sandpaper so it's nice and smooth and ready to stain. When it comes to stain, Varathane brand is my favorite, and this is American Walnut. This is a color that I frequent very often. I just use a clean piece of t-shirt, wipe it on, let it set for about three minutes, and then come back with a new clean piece of t-shirt and wipe away the excess stain, and then let that dry for about three to four hours. And then I protected it with some Odie's wax. Once the base is all assembled, you can see that I have four sides to it and that I've got plenty of pocket holes to attach it to the bottom of the nightstand. So if you guys saw this video on my channel, I followed the DIY tutorial to make a base for the dresser. From the video, her base looks three-sided, so I made mine that way, but I can tell you from experience, it only lasted about a week and then cracked off. So I combined the DIY wife tutorial with the tutorial from Bella Renovar. Kristana, and I have a more sturdy base with different angles and it's four sided for more support. Again, if you want a video on that, let me know. I'll be happy to make one for you guys. All right, so let's get these bases attached. I flip them over and place them, center them up as best as possible. I then had my husband hold it down into place while I attach the base to the nightstand using those one and a fourth inch fine grade Craig jig um, screws. If you don't have someone to help hold your base into place, you can remove the bottom drawer and clamp it down so it stays steady while you screw it in. And the final thing I have to do is to painter's tape off the base and it grabs some paint and touch up that underside to give it a more professional look and then it's done. Here's a quick reminder of the sad little misfits I found on Facebook Marketplace. And here they are now.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I will pop up a few videos here that I think you might enjoy. As always, until next time.